what you just learned here is actually pretty fundamental. You learned how to do correct structuring in the context of a React-based application. Let's learn how to actually code with Cursor AI if you're a complete beginner. The purpose of this video is that if you have no experience of coding, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the perspective and the experience from someone that's building out in an artificial intelligence software that's backed by Google on tips of how to code, structuring on how to code, how to build out in a full production environment. What do you mean by production corporate? I mean like the one that the consumer sees, everything you need to know in this video. So let's jump in. Welcome back y'all. Okay. This video is highly requested due to the fact that I've been doing a ton of cursor videos on my channel here. And a lot of people have been asking me, okay, Corbin, I get it. I know how to set up a project. I know how to render it. Like, but how do I actually give good structuring for one to a production level environment? As a side note here, I'm gonna leave two videos in the description, also possibly as end cards, also as cards on the screen. The first one's gonna be this one right here. This is gonna show you from start to finish, zero to 30 minutes, how to launch a actual live website. What I mean by live website is not localhost 3000, e.g. that. We use Firebase hosting. I gave you Google Docs, ChatGPT chat, et cetera. Check it out. The second major video is gonna be that one right there. In nine minutes, I show you the actual functionality of Cursor AI, what you can do with it, and everything above the board when it comes to this new way of coding. I'm giving that as a pretense because in this video, if you're like Corbin, how'd you even get there? This doesn't make sense. You didn't explain this. Oh, he put beginner in the title, but it's really not for beginners. No, 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 no. Just check out the other videos. The purpose of this video is I already went over all that stuff to get to this point. So let's actually learn how to code. Sound good? Let's do it. Let's go and begin here. First major thing you should know here, this is a React-based application. There's other ways of creating applications, but in this specific context, we're using React. What is React? React is made by Meta. Who is Meta? They're originally called Facebook. Just know where it comes from. Second thing, what is all this shabam here? What's going on here? What should I know? Zoom in. First major thing you should identify is app.js and app.css. App.js is where we're going to render our application. Now, some of you might be asking, Corbin, what do you mean by render? Think of it this way. When we create an application, there's gonna be multiple pages. When I say application, I'm not just talking about like your iPhone app or Android app. I'm talking about like any type of application. This could be a website. This could be a software. This could be anything, y'all. So application is a very ubiquitous term in this context. Knowing that the way we use and leverage app.js here, and I'll show in this video, is this is very much where we render pages and this will make more sense as we get going here. But the idea is this, the app.js should be very limited. You're looking at a max of like maybe 50 lines, maybe 40. And that's because we'll be importing most of the files or most of the other pages and components into the app.js. I know, I know, this might not make a lot of sense. So let me go ahead and just start here by going into structuring. Here's your source folder. I want you to think of your source folder of everything that the front end engineer would handle. When I say front end, I'm talking about like, the website, how it visually looks like. When I say UI, I'm talking about user interface, how you navigate in a website. So just as a real quick example here, I'm gonna say new folder. We're gonna call this assets. In the assets folder, what I typically like to do when I build applications is two major types of folders within that folder. First folder would be images. Second folder would be GIFs or GIFs. Am I gonna start a fight in the comments over that? Some of y'all be fighting me over the dumbest stuff. We'll keep going here. <laughs> The use case for this folder and this structure here is obviously if you have images for your application or you have GIFs for your application, you'll drag them into here. Then you'll reference them from here. As a real quick side note for front-end engineering, typically you want to optimize your images, JPEGs, WebPs. This is going to be a smaller file for the underlying website. It loads faster. I could get into that, but for now, we'll skip that. That covers that. That's the idea here, right? So now you're getting a little bit more in the structuring. Okay, I understand. Okay, so this asset is for like media stuff. Okay, cool. What's the other folders, Corbin? We'll add another folder here. Also to add folders, I simply just right click into wherever I wanna add it. And then it gives me this little prompt here is we're gonna call it homepage. That's it. Within homepage, we can then start adding files that are be relevant to the homepage of our application. So for example here, we can say new file and let's just say we have homepage.js and then we have a new file here as well. And we'll do homepage.css. First major thing you just learned here, which is very important, and you could overlook this if you just jump right into cursor, is notice how I'm separating the JS and the CSS. This is important, you need to understand this. You don't wanna have code where the JS and the CSS are all within that return statement. It's just not gonna look good long-term for scaling, production. It's just, just me on this, okay? As a side note, source folder, as I said before, front-end engineering. Back-end engineering incurs in a whole separate folder, whole separate way to initialize it, et cetera. I can make a video on this, so let me know if you want that in the comments down below. For now, let's just begin and understand 
how to proceed. I'm gonna hit Command K here. I'm just gonna start using Cursor AI to code out a little bit of a front page. This is very simple, two sentences here. I just wanna show you structuring in this context and also it gives me a chance to gut check Cursor AI to see if the code's even good. Build me a React based homepage that is, has a button in the middle that says that was easy. When I click the button, turn it blue, subscribe, maybe generate. Eh, not bad actually, pretty good. Not bad at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. Uh, first major issue, as I referenced earlier, is notice how all the relevant, okay, when I say CSS, I'm jumping, <laughs> I'm jumping here. When I say CSS, that's uh, the visual elements, right? So if you're on YouTube right now, or you're next, that's like, why is the YouTube like font that color? Why is like the, the title that color? Like why is the entire website's entire background like that darker color or lighter color, depending on your theme? That's CSS. So what you'll notice here from this output is that it's putting the CSS within the JS. Not good, don't do, no bueno. Let's go ahead and solve that. Another thing you'll notice is that within Cursor AI, what it typically likes to do or within any type of AI generation, is it will give general class names for stuff, but that's really bad for scaling and that's really bad for creating production level environments because of the fact that button clicked, set button clicked, what does that mean? If I had thousands of lines of code or I had multiple files and I tried to reference back to this, yeah, in theory, I could double click this, find where it's being referenced, hit Command F or just double click and you'll see it's highlighted and see what it's doing. That doesn't work at scale. Keep that in mind. Now I go over why I think having cursor AI is helpful, but doing it in ChatGPT is better. You can check out that video right there because of the fact what I have to do right now. We got over CSS here. Let's go ahead and convert this back to this CSS or just grab the code and put it here so this looks better. So to do so, what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna hit Command A here, hit Command K. Well, actually, first off, let me copy this underlying CSS. So I'm just gonna copy all this. Now I'm gonna hit Command K here. Copy all that and I'm gonna say, okay, don't give CSS here. Please give us a CSS class name for each element. Submit and edit. Looking pretty good here. Hit accept. And what you'll notice is boom, condensed. We'll get a CSS element for the homepage container. We'll get a CSS element for the homepage button. With this pieces of information, what we want to do now is we're going to import the CSS class here so that it reflects into as a visual element. And honestly, just so this looks good, you can kind of get an idea of what's happening here in a visual way. Let me go to run this in the Emmy emulator. Actually, not the Emmy. That's for Firebase and Firebase Emulator, which I could do a whole video on. Emulator in this context is like, think of localhost for React front end. Firebase Emulator is for a bubble back end. Like it doesn't exist. I'm getting too confusing. I'll, I'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Watch those other videos because you might be like, Corbin, how'd you even launch this into localhost 2000? Just watch the other videos. We're going to launch this real quick. To do so, we're going to simply put in npm start. As you already know, this is going to launch a whole separate window page here. So obviously this is rendering the app.js. What I mean by render is that it's grabbing the code found here. So let me go ahead and show you good structuring here before I make the like CSS class and import everything here, right? Let me show you some good structure for the app.js. And to start off here, let's just burn all this. So I'm gonna burn everything except app div, command save. There you go, nothing now. So now we need to import our homepage.js file. First off, I'm gonna command save this. And actually I'm curious, oh, not bad. Pretty good cursor, that's actually really good. Good job, good job cursor. That, I mean, that, that's good, I'm impressed. So this is already making an assumption of what I'm trying to import here. And it knows I'm trying to import my homepage. So I'm gonna hit enter here, command save or tab, command save. And it looks like I can hit tab again. Not bad. Tab again. Okay. I, nice. Okay. Not bad. So if I come back over here, it renders, but obviously it doesn't have its CSS elements, right? That's why it's up there and looks a little crazy. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed by that tab feature there. I will say that there's drawbacks to that. There's a reason why I don't necessarily encourage new coders to jump all in on that kind of stuff. But for now, Let's add that CSS. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna simply have the CSS names, class names, and that original CSS elements that's already created for us. I pasted that into some notes. So I can go here and say, put each of these in the CSS class name. That's fine, hit generate. And we should basically get two elements here. Yeah, perfect, okay, I like that. Except, command save. So to make this simple for y'all, homepage container, come back to here, is the homepage container found here. Sound good? Although in order for this to reference that, we're gonna actually have to import the homepage.css. Because as you see, why isn't it blue? Why isn't it red? So to do so, it you know typically you have to type it, but it's already giving me the little like suggestion here. So I hit tab, command save. There we go. That was easy. Subscribe. Maybe. <laughs> nice. What you just learned here is actually pretty fundamental. You learned how to do correct structuring in the context of a React-based application where you only will render the underlying files here and you will have every single specific type of element and file in little folders there now this is where it gets crazy i want you to think as this as like the the big parent like this is the grandparent 
everything's under it, right? This is the grandparent. But within these little folders here, you could create some child and parent components where you render the same way in these files and then you render the overall file here. Now, that topic I could go into, make you understand better, but for now, I kinda wanna see how this video performs. As I do stuff like this on my channel, but first I wanna get a gauging of if people would be even interested in seeing that type of content as this is a little bit more code heavy. But for now, make sure to leave a like, it's completely free, helps me out here, and you just learn some good structuring tips when it comes to building out cursor apps, or just in reality, just building out applications. Like, cursor AI is just an IDE with AI implemented into it, therefore, I'll see you in the next video. Was today's tutorial good? Was it not? Those are random videos. That's my face. And as I said before, subscribe. Maybe? <laughs>